Today we have with us Dr. Eva Katedral. Welcome, doctor. Hi. Thank you, Henry. And thank you, Dr. Finger. I'm so glad to be part of the Eye Cancer Foundation and ICO Fellowship Training Program. Where did your uh, fellowship take place? I had my fellowship in San Juan de Dio Hospital in Barcelona, Spain, with uh -huh. Dr. Catala as my mentor. Tell us about that experience. I had a wonderful time there, and that was during this COVID pandemic. So I was there this February and March. So I was supposed to be there for six months, but because COVID was declared as pandemic and everything was closing down, so I had to rush back home in the Philippines. Oh. But uh, uh, during my short stay there, I learned a lot because I immersed myself with the, the hospital and with Dr. Catala. It was a really busy schedule, five-day schedule. I was supposed to just be rotating with retinoblastoma, but you know, you don't just rotate in one section. You have to know also the differential diagnosis of uh, retinoblastoma. So I had to rotate also with the uveitis group, with other retinal diseases of the children. Uh, regarding retinoblastoma, I saw that there's a di big difference with our cases here in the Philippines and in Barcelona, because their their retinoblastoma they are uh, intraocular and in the of course, they also have the later stages because uh, they are a referral center. So they have like uh, intraocular uh, primary stage, I mean, early stages, and then also the um, extra intraocular late stages groups, uh, D and E. So it's a, it's a really good learning experience for me. So you actually uh, participated in the surgeries? Actually, in retinoblastoma, our surgery is not really like the enucleation, it's like on a, he, uh, it's more of how you really, f the follow up of patients. I've got to see like how they do it, like before the inject and then after injection. It's the thought process that's, that is very important. All the little things that uh, they are not written in the book, but should be observed. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Did, did you participate in any research, uh, do, do any publication? Uh, at this time, I, I was not able to because of that short period of time. But um, I organized actually a learning program, a distance learning program here in the Philippines through a retinoblastoma webinar that was just two nights ago. So, so you're actually um, helping other doctors already there to, to yeah. learn from you. You see, during this pandemic, our cancer patients here has become a collateral damage, you say. You can say that because everybody's so focused with the pandemic. Everybody's so afraid. Right. And then these cancer patients, you know, they don't go to the hospital anywhere to follow up. And, of course, uh, we lack uh, resources here. So one of my patients, I mean, before I, I went to Barcelona, so when the pandemic came, and that was me, when he followed up, oh my God, the eye was so big again. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So actually, that was also one of the reasons that when they had a lockdown in Spain and everybody had a lockdown, I said that I asked permission from Dr. Catala that I think I want to go home because I may be more valuable here in the Philippines than down in Spain. Um, what would you say to someone who's thinking of becoming a fellow, how would you encourage them to do that? I think uh, I encourage them to do fellowship training. It's not only for yourself. Of course, uh, you need to improve yourself so that you can help others. But if you have a vision you know, for your community and you think that you can help if you have, uh, because it's nice to have connections because there are a lot of people out there and centers out there who are very willing to help you, not just in sharing their knowledge, but also in sharing their connections and their capabilities so that you can improve your country. And with the advent now of the technology, we can easily share information. So I think uh, if you just have that vision, you go for it. Very good. Uh, what else would you like our donors and uh, friends who are going to be seeing this to know about your experience? Well, 
in, there's a lot more to do in the Philippines. Um, so we have already a treatment center in, in Manila. So where before a lot of patients from all over the Philippines go. Now we have here in, I'm in Western Visayas and I see the burden of patients going to Manila for this uh, consultations. Actually, I get referrals from Manila if they are already done with their treatment. So I'm the one who follows it up here in Western Visayas. We still have a lot more to do and we're thinking of uh, starting a treatment center also here in Western Visayas, wow. Philippines. Yeah. Terrific. Because we have, the, we have good doctors here. Okay, dedicated doctors. It's just that we don't have the uh, equipment. What would you need uh, to, to help treat more retinoblastoma patients? I think the foremost that we need is the basic. Uh, we have uh, in our center, we don't have the retcon. Uh, for me, because my practice was uh, before, my practice was uh, oculoplastic, so the smartphone is enough. <laughs> okay, so just. <laughs> take a picture of the eye, but the red cam, because we started on the information campaign of catching retinoblastoma early, and uh, when you detect leukocoria, you go to the doctor. So documentation is very important to see the inside of the eye. And so that's the foremost that we need red cam in our center and just the ocular ultrasound. Other than that, we have uh, a laser. Of course, the patients pay for it, but we will get there. Yeah, so hopefully our, our uh, donors will help us out so that we can help you with that. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Is there anything else you would like us to know? Oh, I, I'm really glad that I was given an opportunity for ophthalmologists. We just have to say uh, what we need in our vision. And I think there are a lot of doctors who are willing to help us. Wonderful. I just want to remind those that are watching this, that it is the generosity of your contributions that have made this possible. Um, thank you again, Dr. Cathedral, and thank you to all those who help to make this a reality for people like you. Thank you.